Hi, everybody. I'm Jamie Kale Miller of Pandora Astrology, and I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Mikas, also of Pandora, and I'm joining in from New York today. And uh, today we wanted to show you how to find true love in your astrology chart, like where to look and how to think about these things in your chart. And today we're going to talk about the three goddesses of relationship. And that may sound funny, like why are there three of them? Well, that's because the first one is Venus, goddess of love and beauty. And she tells you about um, what do you need to really fall in love? What are the traits and properties to look for in a partner and qualities that you want to have in a love relationship so that you can experience a fulfilling and lasting love. And then there's Juno, asteroid goddess of marriage and committed relationship. Also business partnerships are covered in her domain as well. And Juno tells us what do you need to have a sustainable, committed, long-term partnership that you can maintain and keep. And then there is Vesta. She's the bad girl of the Zodiac. She is the short, short relationship you might call her the affair or the transitional partner, that brief relationship that whips through your life and leaves you changed. Um, and so we're going to talk about each of these three archetypes in the charts of some interesting, famous people. And um, Julia, who would you like to start with? We have Billie Eilish, J-Lo, LeBron James, and Beyonce. It would be fun to start with. Yeah, well, you were mentioning earlier that they, they both come from different generations. So maybe yeah. we should do it generationally, like maybe the, the older ones to the younger ones. Okay, let's start with J-Lo then. All right. Here's J-Lo's chart. <clears throat> and um, I'm just going to start um, marking stuff here. So J-Lo has Venus in <clears throat> Gemini right here. And she has got Juno in Capricorn right here. And that's already really interesting because they are so different from each other, suggesting that for JLo to be truly happy in a relationship, she needs to find somebody who satisfies both Venus and Juno. And that is not necessarily the easiest to do because they're so very different. Um, and then I'm also going to pull Vesta. And Vesta is in Cancer. Again, a very different placement. So, Julia, what are your thoughts about what JLo needs in order to uh, feel like she's really in love with her Venus and Gemini? With Venus and Gemini, Gemini being the sign of Mercury, that planet of mentation and communication, uh, it means that she needs to have her Mercury stimulated in order to get her heart stimulated. So that might mean a partner who she finds intellectual, mentally stimulating, somebody who she can communicate with uh, freely, and um, just the more her mind is stimulated, the more her heart is stimulated too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And isn't that so very different from what she needs in a committed relationship, Juno and Capricorn, which wants somebody with a more earthy feel, somebody more grounded and practical, probably somebody who is an achiever, who, um, you know, is uh, strong in their own career and also has respect for hers. Hmm. So there is a more practical set of needs that come in when she thinks about committed relationships. Now, then we have Vesta in Cancer, and Vesta can bring uh, a sense of devotion and dedication to a relationship. It can also bring a great deal of heat and a feeling of magic. Vesta relationships are not built to last, so they sometimes can be a distraction from Venus or Juno type relationships. But if you can really get the hat trick, if you can get um, a relationship with somebody who has something to bring to the table for each of these three goddesses, then wow, you've really, really scored. So Vesta's needs are a deep emotional connection. She's in Cancer. So Vesta says, I look for a partner using my heart, using my instincts. Gemini says, Venus in Gemini says, my mind has to be stimulated in the relationship. And then Juno says, what 
You know, if my partner isn't good in the everyday with the practical things, well, then it's just no go. Mm -hmm. Julia, you want to add anything before we move to the next chart? No, I think, I think we covered it. Great. Then going in age order, let's go with Beyonce. And Beyonce has got Venus in Libra. And she has got Juno in Scorpio and Vesta in Libra, very close to Venus. So maybe we should talk about those together. Good idea. Julia, what are your thoughts about uh, Venus in Libra? Oh my gosh, is it really smack on the rising? Oh, sure yes. Looks that way, hello. Goodness, doesn't know. that make sense? She, yeah, Venus right on her rising. So she identifies very strongly with her Venus, which means she identifies strongly with her looks, with her stylishness, with her, with her femininity. Um, you know, and Beyonce, we all, we, <laughs> none of us can ever be Beyonce. She's, she's just, you know, this, this goddess of a woman in terms of her, her beauty, her talents, everything like that, all in one package. Um, Venus in Libra, you know, she Libra is a sign of sharing. It's a sign of equality. Um, people with Venus and Libra, you know, they 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 tend to live and breathe relationships. They, you know, beauty is a very central thing to her, um, and that's something which maybe she can bring into how she falls in love with people. Having a sense of equality, maybe sharing things with her partner, um, having them share things with her. That really that really shows how she falls in love. And and since it's an air sign, it's also quite social. Um, so wanting a partner who can be social with her um, and maybe who doesn't just isolate her socially but kind of connects her more socially um, mm. as well. I love that. And, um, you know, let's just take a jaunt over to Juno for a second and talk about how that contrasts with Juno and Scorpio. Whew. Because I think that Juno and Scorpio suggest that when Beyonce commits, it's, that's when her sense of privacy really comes up. Wouldn't ah. you think, Julia? That's a great, that's a very good interpretation of that. Yeah, I would think that um, there would just be a, a very strong need to have the committed relationship be less in the public eye. Yeah, and perhaps even more drama than what we see. <laughs> that's quite possible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what I like to say about Juno and Scorpio is that sometimes they just want their partner on lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> and that's because, you know, especially if you've ever had your heart been broken with your Juno and Scorpio there, um, there is just such a tendency to never want it to be broken again. Mm, yeah. And uh, and so it's hard to trust, you know, a second time or a third time. And, uh, and that is difficult to do, but so worth the effort because this Juno and Scorpio is capable of the most profound, deeply intimate connection. Um, so then we have Vesta here in a conjunction with Venus and that Venus right on the ascendant. And that is so interesting to me because when I see this, I pretty much see a kind of a classic case of somebody who can easily get confused about whether a relationship she's in is a Venus one or a Vesta one. This is sort of typical of somebody who may pour so much of themselves into a relationship so early that it burns out too quickly. It's too intense. It's actually too much for the partner to be noticed that much, seen that much, to have that much cosmic energy poured into them. And they get full and they the partner may end their relationship before you're ready. And that can be so heartbreaking, right? Right. So uh, when I see this, what I say is slow down, girl. You know, make sure he respects you before you take it any further. I think that's really important because this is like, you know, this is like, it's like you've got a magical temple to invite this man into. And, uh, and in that temple, he's going to feel like the only man in the world. And that is so, such an amazing experience that you can't rush it. You know, like, don't rush him in there. Um, hold back, slow down the action. That's what needs to happen to, to really make it work. Um, Cause you got that temple in your pocket. You can, you can bring that thing out anytime you want. You don't need to use it, you know, to like get his interest. Mm. 
Um, so that was super interesting. And if we're going in age order, the next person we've got is LeBron. So let's take a look at his chart. <clears throat> so now we're looking at a man's chart. And um, I think that traditionally in astrology, it's been said that Venus represents the partner. And, uh, and certainly that is true. I think it in a way is even more true in the chart of a man uh, where he may have a tendency to project Venus onto his partner and um, not necessarily think to um, live it out himself. And that might be even more true when you get, you know, to the chart of somebody, you know, who is a professional athlete who may really be very much about being manly, right? <clears throat> but this Vesta is also, this Venus is also a self-identifier. And we know that because Venus is trying the rising. So this is the chart of somebody who is not only um, an amazing athlete, but also pretty relatable. Mm. So Venus is in Aquarius, Juno is in Libra, Vesta is in Libra, and all three of these relationship goddesses are in air signs. So there's a very big streak of uh, being personable and relatable in these, in these planets. Um, what do you think about that Venus and Aquarius in LeBron's chart, Julia? Wow, Venus and Aquarius. Aquarius is the sign of groups, the sign of friends. So primary, what's most important for a Venus and Aquarius person is to feel like their partner is their best friend, um, that, that they have a real solid foundation of friendship um, over just mushy gushy romance. Um, and since it's, since it's also the sign of groups, it's important for Venus and Aquarius to again, find a, a partner who um, connects them more socially, you know, somebody that maybe they, they get along well with your friends and you can join in on, on whatever groups that they're a part of too. But having a lot of uh, social freedom and freedom, shared freedom with a partner is really uh, critical for this Venus sign. Yeah. And, you know, I think that Venus and Aquarius people can seem aloof, oh, yeah. even when they're quite interested in somebody. Yeah. And, and really what's going on is that they value friendship very highly. And they just are checking to see whether or not you are a prospect for, for friend. And that forms the basis for relationship, for taking it further. Like, I think a Venus and Aquarius person wouldn't think of partnering with somebody who wasn't already a friend or who couldn't be a friend. I agree, yeah. So then we have Juno and Libra. And what's nice is that this Venus and Juno are placed in compatible positions with each other. Now, they're not in an out-and-out -out trine, which would, um, which would be super sweet to see. But, um, but they're both in air signs, and so they have some agreement based on that. And, uh, and so this Juno in Libra is very social, and it carries those themes that you mentioned, Le uh, Julia, about like, you know, wanting a partner who will enhance your social connectedness. Yeah. I think that this Juno in Libra wants that too. I think that it also wants a relationship of equals, as best as that is possible to have with somebody so very much in the public eye, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and it wants that feeling of equity and balance and fairness, as well as harmony and peace to be in the relationship, a true partnership. Now Vesta is also in Libra and it trines Venus so that LeBron might have a, a bit of the same situation um, that we saw in uh, Beyonce's chart where uh, there's a connection between Venus and Vesta, so there might be a tendency to invite people into the relationship so quickly and to just overwhelm them with an abundance of attention. Mm. And um, But what I'll say is that because this is in a trine, I'm thinking that LeBron probably has an easier time kind of restraining and slowing down the action that way, and that... Um, what was my thought there? But that he's also probably really loyal. When he's in love, he's probably really uh, loyal to his partner and, um, and that his partner feels that sense of devotion. Right. And that has a real yeah. sweetness to it. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I mean, uh, Venus being in a fixed signs, fixed signs and uh, tend to kind of stick with things a little bit too. So I, mm. I agree with that. And a partner who can handle a bit of aloofness uh, because of all the air. I also see a square to Saturn that can that can be a little bit that can be a little bit um, reserved in affection, let's say. Yes, so, you know, indeed. Partner, yeah, a partner who can who can handle a little bit of maybe a bit of detachment, um, but who is very socially plugged in. Yeah, yeah, and who doesn't read that detachment as a lack of love, right? Um, right. But instead, as an interest in friendship. Yes, that's very good. glass half full for sure. Okay, let's go to Billie Eilish's chart. This is the last one we have to look at today. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing Venus is in Sagittarius. I love that we're seeing Venus in a different sign. This is gonna be a whole other story, uh, very different in its feel. And we have Juno in Leo. And is it in a trine? Not quite. Venus is at 20 degrees Sag, Juno's at 29 degrees Sag, but they're in compatible elements, which is very helpful. And then we have Vesta, and Vesta is in Gemini. And it's actually um, in a square to that Juno, so that's interesting. So Julia, what are your thoughts about Venus in Sagittarius? Venus in Sagittarius, Sagittarius being the sign of Jupiter, that planet of exploration, adventure, wide horizons. Um, this is a Venus sign that takes a little while to settle down. Uh, this is a kind of sow your wild oats Venus sign. I mean, she's still a very young girl, so um, I feel so old. But yeah, she's born 2001. I was you know, hadn't, I was still in high school. So she's still young. <laughs> she might be the type of girl who wants to kind of explore a little while before she's ready to settle down, which is perfectly cool. Um, and uh, Venus in Sagittarius also likes to have their kind of higher mind stimulated by a partner. It could be a partner who could be kind of philosophical, maybe somebody who's a little bit academic, or maybe somebody who's just very worldly. Maybe, the, you know, there, there are different ways that our higher mind can be stimulated. One can be in a university, another can be through travel and adventure. Um, yeah. So drawn to a certain worldliness in a partner, somebody who could show her new things, who can be really humorous and, and upbeat because those are all the things that Sagittarius relates to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's definitely about adventure. It's definitely about humor. Uh, it's about growth and exploration. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I think Billie Eilish is a little bit famous for uh, expressly not wearing clothes that show off her shape mm -hmm. and that she doesn't want to be, you know, limited to her, her shape. And she doesn't want like the, you know, the body image crap to land on her, which seems so Venus and Sagittarius to me, like wearing clothes that are comfortable or baggy instead of, you know, showing off your beauty. And, um, and that makes a lot of sense to me, considering that this Venus is conjunct the midheaven, it's conjunct the sun, it's angular. So um, yeah, it's a very strong placement of this Venus. And now, Gina, we have in Leo. Yeah. What was that, Julia? No, that was a really interesting observation. And I and I also throw in the Pluto in there too, on her Venus, on her midheaven, Venus being her her beauty, her style, midheaven also her public reputation, private, not having yes. to show it all. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and Pluto squares the rising too. Mm -hmm. And that Pisces rising, you know, that can be so dreamy. <clears throat> okay, so then we have Juno, which is in Leo, the very end of Leo. Um, what are your thoughts about that Juno? Yeah, the Juno, I mean, it's still a fire sign, even though they're not connected by aspect, you know, there's going to be the connection by element. So again, fire brings a sense of enthusiasm. It's an adventurer, uh, adventurous kind of highly spirited element. So mm. she wants a long-term partnership when she's ready to settle down <laughs> to be, um, you know, she wants a long-term partnership to, to have that sense of inspiration, really kind of be sort of high spirited, not just kind of maybe people sitting around at home doing the same thing every night but a little bit of spark a little bit of energy for sure and with Leo a partner that she can um 
feel that others admire very strongly. You know, Leo is the sign mm. of the performer and a performer has a whole audience looking at them. So, you know, at some point it, it'll be somebody who I think, um, you know, she feels has the admiration and the respect of the world. Yeah, I think she really wants to feel proud of her partner and to feel that her partner is proud of her as well. I think that's really important. I like to think of Juno and Leo as wanting to be part of a power couple, really. You know, so maybe somebody that can share the limelight um, in a good way. And then we have Vesta in Gemini. Vesta squares Juno, which I find really interesting. And, uh, and Vesta is in Gemini. And so uh, Vesta, remember, tells us, you know, what, what brings that quality of specialness, um, that quality of like, you know, you're the only one in the world for me. But also that Vesta relationships can burn out really quickly. So Vesta in Gemini suggests that um, Billy might get into a really stimulating conversation with somebody and find talking to them so fascinating that she might leap too quickly into a relationship and find that it burns out too fast. Mm -hmm. So there's, um, there's a bit of uh, a watch out there, I would say, um, for those people who stimulate your mind. And there's plenty of air in this chart. This chart has so much air. There's a lot of strong intellect and uh, communication themes in this chart, absolutely. Um, now, Vesta's square to Juno, I think, is also challenging because um, I think that Billy is, over the course of her uh, lifetime in committed relationships especially, going to have to figure out how to, uh, to make her partner feel special in a sustained way over time. Mm and how to partner with somebody um, that she can, you know, periodically enter and re-enter the temple where, where, uh, you know, the connection, you know, they're reminded of the magic of this connection. And that's a practice, really. It's a, it's a life practice. When you've been married to somebody for years, you have to, like, you know, take that date night every once in a while, even though you feel like you already know everything about this person. You have to be open to the wonder of um, discovering new things about them all the time. And that can restore the magic, even in a long-term relationship. So, well, that was fun. <laughs> and if you, our beloved viewer, want to have this treatment for your chart, then you have a couple of choices. On our website, in our, on our services page, you can get a lifelong love reading. Uh, in which we can go into these three goddesses in your chart and explain what your needs are in terms of finding true love. And uh, also, if you already have a partner, then you should consider the couples reading. Um, I find um, that quite often when people come to me for a couples reading, they leave it feeling more in love than ever. And so that's really sweet to be able to do that. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.